let him have that one. I just don't blame them at all for it, especially since it's the champion that has some better matchups now. And since you have Thunderlord's Decree, you can actually get a really good combo off that chunks somebody. You know, pretty much win that trade against most mages mid. Yeah, he's Thunderlord's casting in with, with Run of Ages and... and, and Jesus Christ. Lich Bane. Oh, been a Lich long Bane. day. You can Lich also Bane. get Abyssal on him, too. That yeah. one's good, too. Incredibly strong on this patch overall. Uh, Dr. Mundo, I don't think we've seen a single one this tournament. Hope it stays that way. Incredibly interesting champion. Yeah, not fun to play against, really, out yep. of the jungle. Just kind of doesn't die and hits you for a lot of damage. Lulu will be the next band coming out of NA. Just generally being stronger in the 1v1 tournament as well. Malphite will be coming out as the second band from LPL. Just really good top lane at the moment. Neutralizes a lot of those top lane matchups, does a bunch of damage, and Lee Sin will round out the NA bands. Interesting that both Kindred and Quino are up. Maybe they're just trading on one each. With the loss to Lee's band, that it does seem uh, what's going to be going on. Although NALCS have to first pick uh, one of them. Let's take it for the Jax, because now the LPL can actually steal both Kindred and Quinn. Uh, maybe you just use it as a top laner, or even AD carry Kindred, so you can actually steal something away there. Yeah, that's true. I am a big fan of drafting Quinn because it's a flex pick in three rolls. They don't really know exactly where it's going to be going, and you can actually adapt your draft after that. If you go with the Jax right away, there are some matchups. You could even pull off on Aurelia against it, build your own Rage Blade. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm angrier than you! So then you try to win that one. <laughs> I mean, instead of trying to fight him, you can also just avoid it and roam away. Top lane Quinn, in that sense, could be an answer if you survive the laning phase. Looks like Dyrus is a little worried for his team, though. It's going to be a team player, blocking the Kindred. Yeah, spending a lot of time on this first pick, though, from NA. And uh, Kindred would be a lot safer just locking that into the jungle or even just bringing out the flex, but it is going to be the Kindred for the jungle. Yeah, Meteos had a great performance on that. 8-3 and 11 yesterday. He did lag a little bit in how quickly he got his stacks up so that he was killing champions and not marking him appropriately. But he was also not getting the jungle camps when they had an advantage. So if he doesn't have an advantage in this game, I'm actually very curious as how he's going to get his stacks up because we saw him at three when they had already gotten in an advantageous position in that previous game. I definitely have to keep track of those stacks as we get through this game. What is LPL going to pick up? Haven't banned out the Misfortune members, and Uzi went off on that champion, but it is going to be the Callista locked in here for the AD carry, and Lissandra as well as Flex, and we saw that earlier today as well. Yeah. Not I'm not too convinced about the Lissandra so far. Every time I've seen it, it's been lackluster, to say the least. It is a Flex. It might even be better in the mid lane because it seems to get absolutely dumpstered. In yeah, we saw it against Quinn as well, and that just didn't help matters. And Huni was all over the map, and Marin just not a good game. Yeah, I'm not convinced. I don't know what would have changed to make it so that you want to play Lissandra now more than you did before. Yeah, I don't. I can't think, really think of any Keystone. Maybe Thunderlords is okay when you get a combo when you jump in, but even then, all over all core items, items, right? Got yeah. You don't want Rod of Ages. You don't want these items that have had a reduced cost or increased effectiveness. Yeah, I mean the items that we saw earlier were basically the old items that we saw in yep. Lissandra yeah. and it just didn't really More work out. Yeah, exactly. NA has picked up the next two picks will be the Alistair and Lucian coming in. Aphromoo is Alistair, something to be feared and also the Lucian as well, just really good on this patch. Easy, easy way to deal with Callista if he hops left and right and he keeps juking your skill shots. Well, flash ball rise. <laughs> Knock him back. Actually, and stealing the Alistair is, is, is good too because uh, you definitely want to interact with the Kindred ulti. Whether it's your own uh, Kindred or an enemy's Kindred, you can knock enemies out of your circle to try and kill them in these team fights. Just knockback effects incredibly, incredibly uh, potent in combination with that Kindred ulti. Yeah, that explains a little bit of the Lee Sin ban and Clear Love as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for a Gragas here, but he is going to go for the Skarner. So okay. interesting. Okay, so Skarner coming out here. Haven't seen Skarner for a long time. The Spire's interaction as well. Yep. Has to see what he itemizes out of the jungle. Uh, Braum was the other pickup as well, alongside of Callista. Last time I saw it, it was uh, Kakao in the jungle. It was very good. <laughs> Lots changed since then, though, because we've got a lot of new items now coming into uh, 523. Um, but the kind of landscape of League of Legends has changed, so we'll see how Skarner fits into it. Very peculiar. Quinn's gone through this draft. Gangplank, I see no priority here, so a little bit of a different draft. And ALCS can still pick up the Quinn, just flex it. No, we saw Quinn as the final pick as well from Huni anyway uh, on the uh, on the uh, red side. So we'll see what the next two pickups are here by NALCS. They could pick up both. They could go Quinn and Gangplank right here. I haven't picked up either of the solo lanes yet. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, oh. A, it's a different well, bird. Well, I like that. I like that combination. You have a tank support in the front line. You have your backline ultimately protected by a Kindred Ultimate. Interaction, really interesting too. Like you can 
even keep the egg alive, worst case. Uh, Anivia kites very well, a lot of zone control, double barrel with the Anivia. If this lineup gets stays even, uh, again, you can clearly tell that any LCS is not looking for 20 minute snowball with, with this yeah. composition, but they can definitely wreak havoc in the mid to late game though, with, with very good kiting, very good siege potential too. Don't do it, don't tilt us even more. <laughs> no Jax. No Jax, lock in. That'll be going uh, up top against Gangplank, so... Uh... Actually, a little bit of a harder matchup, but you should be able to get out of the barrels using uh, Leap Strike. But, of course, the barrels go through Counter Strike, which is one of the major things in the top lane matchup with Jax, usually. And obviously, Remove Scurvy gets you out of the Jax stun, yeah. which is where he deals most of the damage early in the trades. Oh, a Koro special here. It looks like it's going to be that Hecker. Okay. Yeah, he already swapped Summoner spells for it, so he was ready to take that pony into the top lane. It is a good champion for Koro. It's one of the champions that he wasn't always a carry top laner, right? He had these champions that he could play on the side. There was like Gnar could carry, but he also had Hecarim in his arsenal. So this is one of Koro's uh, aggressive champions. Yeah, I want to see what a player of Rookie's caliber does with Lissandra mid here. Uh, obviously running double teleport too. Uh, can maybe use the fact that Anivia isn't one of the strongest forward laners. Uh, it's, it's somewhat doable to go even against Anivia in a lot of matchups. That could free up Rookie to make a lot of influence in other sides of the map. Definitely would need to see him roam because I don't think 1v1 uh, there's any outplay potential from, from Lissandra into uh, Nivia, let alone without the Ignite. But something I'm very excited for here is just that bot lane matchup. Double lift versus Uzi. He's always wanted to play against Uzi in a 5v5, 2v2 bot lane. If somebody lane swaps here, <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen that many lane swaps, if any, so far in the All-Stars. So probably going to get that 2v2 he's really been looking for. I think everybody's trying to test their metal against each other in that bot lane. Prove that they're the better two on two. And I know that rush hour was always like that. It was always, let's go bottom, let's 2v2 them if they're going to swap. And even then, they always were very confident in their ability, regardless of matchup most of the time. A lot of people have been getting the opportunity to fight the opposite number throughout the all-star here so far. So remember, for the last time today, jump on Twitter, use those hashtags FireWin or hashtag IceWin. Get your votes in as we load onto the rift here. It is LPL going up against NA in this final game of today. Obviously, we know who the winners will be. LPL. The fans. <laughs> there you Crepo's on board. Yeah. Uh, not aligned with you guys, unfortunate. But we will be like getting guys the rift here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah got some Were those only your fans? Yeah. It's my personal corner. You, you brought them with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Caro. Can we move the audience? Did you just like... slip him a 20? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Crepo? Come back here. All right. Let's see. No so really group invade. Alistair and Nivia brings a really strong invade, but it looks like they want to cover all bases. You got to contest these crystals. Get that money. Get that money. Oh, the Ping. Way. Not dying there, level one. After move, taking some hits from Rocky. Bjergsen, there to back him up. Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> He's here. He's ready. The Spires are about to uh, activate. And he should be secured here by ice, but uh, yeah, just trying to secure as much vision as both team can at the start of the game. Interesting matchup in bottom. Bram usually bullies uh, melee supports, which turns uh, and the Bram Alistar combination into a very sustained heavy approach from Alistar. You have one bullet in your shotgun, that is the Q flash into knockback. But without Ignite, it actually becomes hard to deal with Uzi then. So I think Uzi and Pibala have the superior lane, uh, but Double Lift and Aphromo can easily avoid most of the rough situations, mostly because Alistair can just sustain over and over. Doubles can stay pretty safe. There's always counter engage potential, so likely that lane turns into a farm fest unless the, you have a level 2 or 3 uh, Pulverize Flash to knock back. Yeah, that's really your only option. Otherwise, the burden of execution is really on Uzi and TYL. You get to make all the moves that you want. If he lands the Q, then you get to go aggressive. Yep. Yeah, well, starting off standard lanes here, both Meteos and Clearlo starting on the bottom side of the jungle. They may be finding themselves on the upper side very shortly. Aphromoon double lift up against PYL and Uzi already. The aggression coming out. Nice double Good up pulverize. Up onto both players. PYL still trying to get in range for the concussive blows. One more auto tag either from Uzi or PYL will activate it, but not looking for it right now. Yeah, and that was even in uh, Blue Team's minions too. Obviously, Uzi and PYL prioritizing the push, but Aphromoon has to throw the needle there play far enough up that he can go for the pulverize, not too far that he gets picked off a little bit, gets stunned and then focused without allowing double to return fire, but that was really well positioned. Good trade. Do you have to worry about the level two here? Yeah, gets a level two. A lot of damage with the 
Spirit of Dread and the Rampage. It's interesting to see what he'll itemize as well, because uh, this is the patch where Home Guards is activated at 20 minutes. So uh, you don't rush the boost into Home Guards like you used to. Also, big nerf to top lane run. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what have they done? My TP jumps. It's a personal problem. Well. Yeah. Full armor. Convert it all into AD. Fantastic. Oh. Clear love. Meteors have found each other, but looking for a fright right now. That's ball. Uh, uh, UIL. Taking a bit of damage here, trying to get the first of blows off. Meteors actually finds Clear love once again. Slows him down with the E. Getting the damage. Onto clear love as he retreats into the jungle. Can't quite finish him off right now. Both with double buffs. Actually, it's likely that we missed the part where Aphrom was skill heal and then use it in lane. I don't think PRL would have ever moved in that position. Yeah. If it weren't for that. So Aphrom will likely show the heal, allowing PRL to move up there. Oh. Steal from Meteos. Joint feels bad. Yeah, Meteos is actually trying to defend him getting the Scuttler so he gets that stack. And then he found clear love. So just keep him back in his jungle after you get that big chunk out there. That is really bad for Clear Love because he has to go away from the top jungle, didn't secure his red buff yet. The Spire got taken so he can't even fight around the area anymore, and now he just gets, needs to go to the bot side, takes away the crab. Is his red still up too? I believe yes. his red is still up, yeah. So it looks like Mitos is able to pick it up. He has yeah, the red and the Spire. He saw the buffs on Clear Love too, so he could obviously use what was going on. Clear Love carries position after him, level 3, but... Oh? Oh, he used this pulverize already, else he would have maybe moved up towards Uzi there, but he's dropping dangerously low. That all in, obviously, there's a cap on what you can achieve for that if you're blaming on 50% um, HP. Yeah, but already the CS differential on the bot lane, 29 CS to 17 is already massive just from the trades that have been happening. Yeah, I think the mistake was finding the push um, for Aphrom when double lift here. One trick you can do is stand in your range creeps, get one auto, and that force pushes the lane backwards due to a, a certain series of minion interactions. If you do that twice, you can actually just farm comfortably on the tower until you get the levels required. Um, that's an approach Rush Hour does very rarely because they're so confident in their laning ability. This top lane, Dyrus. Barrels trying to chain those onto Karo. A couple minions here, but Darius is still ahead in the farm. Despite Karo getting that level 2 advance, plus, uh, pushing Darius back to the tower. I actually want to ask you about that, Krepo. Sorry, I wanted to jump back for a second there. The uh, You were talking about stand in your ranged minions yep. and auto attack the enemy champion? No, you you, you, you stand in your ranged creeps and then you wait. Uh, you do nothing until the enemy support gets greedy and attacks you once. Your minions aggro on the enemy champions. Their minions keep attacking your minions. Gotcha. You reset, you do that one more time, you've taken maybe two auto attacks worth of damage, but 12 minion bolts now have redirected to um, to enemy champions instead. Therefore, the wave pushes back to your tower and you can farm on the tower. Gotcha. Because I'm always standing in my minion wave, hitting the enemy champion. No, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Being counterproductive. It will make sense now. It all depends on whether you want to push or not. It's a little intricate trick you can do into baiting people to force push you. Then I get a quick level two, then the wave bounces out again, and you can use that momentum to then zone them off even more and potentially free up support for a roam. Yeah, I just know how to farm jungle camps. Yup. I can't. Wait, I wait, beat wait. every I beat every <laughs> jungle game I play. That's why I get support so often, because I'm like I threaten them by showing them my off roll. Anyways. <laughs> well, the concussive blows are down onto Afrin. We should be able to get the last auto for the stun, but still very tanky. He gets the rend as well yeah. for some more trades. Look at how Uzi is playing on the edge of Flash Pulverize range. That if uh, Afrin will commit still Meteos. Oh, teleport now coming in. Meteos knocked towards the tower. The Flash comes Ooh. after the stun, the lockdown, the first blood over to Rocky. Yeah, really good reaction there from Rookie. And this is exactly what we were expecting, you know, 1v1 in the mid lane. We know that nothing's going to happen, but people forget that mid laners can run teleport too. And Medios, fantastic early game, but he does get caught out there. Yeah, Bjergsen also tried to use his teleport, had to cancel it, decided to just shove the middle lane up. But then Clear Love came and rotated to it, so he picked up some of the CS there as well. But it might be a collapse onto Bjergsen if he keeps staying here. There it is. Well, gets the ultimate down onto Bjergsen. Still has Egg, remember. Clearly trying to get in range. Gets a fracture, but not level 6 yet. So, can't finalize the uh, the Egg pop. It's like you were saying in Champion Select, though. With Rocky, with the uh, with the roams over, really, just the straight-up lane. He has to just kind of farm that one out. Look for the roams, look for the kills in the side lanes. Already secured the first blood to make that happen, but... Especially with this build, though. Put on cooldown now. Abyssal Rush Lissandra into a Kalos and Nivea. You're not going to do anything in that lane. You're gonna avoid getting killed, but that's about it. Like, you don't have the damage. Yeah, you don't even have the mana to get him from full HP into egg and kill the egg. Our bottom lane is still trading away. Still advances to Uzi as well from the initial trades that happened. 
Oh. Afro Moon with the combo. Yep. Yeah. They've been playing so far away from each other so that Afro Moon can't get a two man pulverize. But now that they push the wave up and there's a little bit less room to work with, you don't want to run off to the side or the right side of this lane because it's pushed up on the left. So, yep. saw the opportunity, got some damage for the trade. Clear left coming in here though, around the back. Afro Moon pulverize is still on cooldown. That's why Uzi's going aggressive. Yes, the stun. Clear trying to come down here. Has the level six. Now they take her Afro Moon on the retreat even before Clear Love arrives. The flash. Oh, oh beautiful. Right. The pullback. Impale and double lift is stun locked, is not able to pick up the kill onto PYL. Two and zero over to LPL. Yeah, more importantly, that was a Q flash from PYL, not a flash Q, which made it so that's incredibly hard to dodge in time, especially since it's so point blank. So double lift probably had to, if anything, respect flash uh, earlier than that. So really good execution of PYL. Blows double lift flash in addition to that. He's only sitting on the heel right now. Exactly, because if he had done it in the reverse order, easily then that flashed. actually looked like it was yeah. going to be easily flashed based on the timing there. It actually eliminates that quarter second cast yep. time animation, so it comes out very quickly. But this is really bad, because because Double Lift doesn't have his flash right now, Uzi has flash available to him, and he also has his ultimate fate's call. So they have playmaking ability on Double Lift. Yeah, Afro can't afford to use any offensive uh, polarized combos unless it leads to a one-shot right now. Um, I don't think there's any kill potential in the sense that Afro Moku will always, always be able to disengage. They actually missed this pulp. Right. Yep. That led to that exchange. So that obviously means like clear of sun. And yeah, watch it right here. You can see it. He stands still for a fraction of a second. That's going to lead yep. to the Q flash coming out immediately. So the flash yeah, gets hidden in the cast animation. Beautiful execution. Well, gives a kill to Uzi. Not above, there's the support. It's those tiny things. Yeah, and once that landed. Wasn't really getting out of that. You can actually style on kids with it. Yeah. <laughs> you can flash over the cursor and then Q backwards for absolutely no use at all. <laughs> but it, I could have been there. <laughs> Just because I could. You gotta practice, you know. Do it in normal games. Ooh, Iris. Iris with the auto as well. Trial by fire. So much true damage on Takara. He's gonna have to back up here. Went with the Sheen over the Phage as well. Dyrus was always the guy that took him a long time to pick up those new champions. I was expecting a Quinn today, but I was like, is Dyrus really gonna be able to pick up Quinn that quickly? And it looks like he's actually been able to get on that Gangplank train already. His barrel use is actually pretty decent. You put the barrel on you so that you can hook it or chain it to other people. Yep. And since Coral's a melee champion, you have this threat range of two barrels out from you at all times when you put one on yourself. Yeah. You can't clear it. Rookie having a rough time here in mid, though. This matchup is, is definitely tilting towards Nivea right now. He goes even in CS, but the pressure is on Bjergsen. Bjergsen can always walk up ER if he's vision, or he knows roughly where Kleelov is. He can play so far forward in the lane that there's no counter trade potential from Rookie. Yeah, if you're going even in CS with the Nivea, you're probably going to get outscaled. She should probably be further behind than that. Yeah, but that. looking at the yeah. teleport, so that's that's the the I mean, win condition you could call it. That's the, the the play to be made for Rookie. He doesn't want to get any plays in mid unless it's for a flash ulti into uh, Skarner ultimate from Kleelov. Yeah, Rookie has to be the proactive player on that one though, because Bjergsen's teleport is also coming off cooldown at the same time as Rookie's. So it has to be fast on the draw, pick up the kill real fast before Bjergsen reacts. Likewise, Darius and Karo have their own teleport, so any play that's made on the bottom side of the map will probably result in everyone going down there. Yeah, and it looks like LPL are actually grouping up and putting uh, vision around the yep. sides of the jungle near the dragon. They're kind of feigning towards it. That's what you do if you get if you play against very slow scaling solos. You kind of put the pressure on the, uh, on the weak point, which is then the bot lane. Uh, if you can really roam and expose that, because there's not much Nivea's going to do if you push it in and roam. You can maybe go for a bot lane dive then. Aphromoo obviously with the unbreakable, hard to dive, but. Could be an opening here for the LPL with the double teleport. Yeah, very difficult the first time with Alistair. Still winning him down though. The autos and the winters by oh. has to go for the aggressive play, the flash, and the here. pulverize the knockback as well. But PYL, just using it, right? stand behind me, is able to get back into safety range. The Meteor's not able to pick Uzi is so good, man. He read, he read that so beautifully. He knew exactly what Afrim was going to do. Because that's, again, Alistar, similar to what we talked about earlier with Braum Flash. Hang on, Bjergsen. The Flash into the stun lock and clear love as well with the Impale. Bjergsen should be going into egg form here and he will have the damage just to take out the egg. Gonna take a couple seconds. Who's it gonna go for? Oh, actually, over to clear love. Bottom lane, though, the trade comes out. Unbreakable will by Aphromu and looks for the re-engage in the fight, but Ice, that's all they wanted. Take up the ultimate and back off. And there's going to be damage dealt to this mid lane turret here. Meteos, he might be looking for a tower dive. He does have his ultimate available, but they can use it against you as well, and it's going to be so hard because there is a Fate's Call available. Yeah, under the oh, tower as well. It looks like he's going for this. Has revealed himself now. Now the teleport comes in. 
maybe a little preemptively, but he's here Gag back ulti. just in case they decide to go for the dive. Now the teleport's in. All oh, the teleport is going to be a full party down in the bot lane. Rookie dropping low, so it's PYL. Oh. He just goes down before the ultimate comes out from himself. And Dorlin is getting shredded. Uzi takes him out. Bjergsen is also there trying to get this final kill. There's the duel in for Bjergsen. And Koro trying to pick up a kill in return. The egg is already down. And that is so far three for free. But Darius is now underneath this tower with Khalilov. And Koro is able to just run him down for his double kill. Absolutely crucial mistake from Darius and Meteos. Darius should have used ulti and then teleported in. It was a four second channel that really did. Team NA there could have used that ultimate. In addition to that, Meteos died without popping his ultimate. He got Chain CC down, so very poor execution on that dive even though it's terribly telegraphed. Yeah, you should put it on the turret right now. You slow them down, it forces them to cluster. Aphromoo gets a two-man. He could have possibly gotten a three-man if he had actually done it correctly. And also, Videos, it takes them longer to get to him. And as a ranged character, you want those slows so that that zone of threat that you have, you get to keep and you get to kite backwards. No ultimate there from Meteos either. If he had popped it there, he actually probably would have been saving the enemy team a little bit more because they were on low HP. And the Kindred ulti, when there's more people with low HP, they're the ones who are actually benefiting from it because they get to chip away at the high HP targets to make them possible people to finish off after the ultimate. Yeah, and also so, so, so many Sonas burnt from NA as they were trying to just pick up that final kill on Uzi. Bjergsen had to burn the flash as well. And back Worth. to mid lane. <laughs> Worth. Oh, this three and eight right now. Koro in, in a good position because he was losing the lane slowly to Dyrus. Right now, three zero one. And Barrage used right now to clean out a wave. Double lift is cross mapping to get a tower here, so a bit of a better map play from him. North American squad. They're actually going for tier two on the bottom lane because they bought so much time on that top tier one. They're actually ahead of the play right now, and Core is going, going down to bottom with no support from him. Ice Doom manages to kill the Blue Buffalo. He's more consolation prizes. The top tower also goes down over to the LPL. Double lift after and Meteor should be able to take this one away. Karo really quick. does have his ultimate though. If there's any backup around, it doesn't look like it's just yet. Yeah, only now Rookie is looking for the rotation. After we gets the lockup, the knockback as Ooh. well. And the follow up from Double lift is huge. And that's the kill. You gotta respect Afrim right there. Dyrus falls on the left side there, but the Kindred ultimate is still available. I don't know what Koro was thinking there. Just can see the tower. Consolidate your forces in the middle lane, because now another rotation though, because Uzi is still farming in the top lane. He only just now takes down a tower. And for move, looking for a pick in the mid lane. They're going to shove this up. You have multiple ranged carries here. That's the beauty of having Kindred, is you get to do a lot of damage without threat against you onto turrets. Yeah, well, Afro still has his ultimate as well. They all decides to go for the dive. Didn't even have to use it in the dive against Karo. PYL trying to block all the damage that he can using the Unbreakable. Clear off to the side. Who will he use the ultimate on? Looking for the fight, but Rocky is dropping low already. PYL the flash into the ultimate. There's the Lamb's respite, keeping everyone alive for now. Who's gonna step out of the circle, out of the ring? PYL will go down first. Uzi has been exhausted off to the side. Michos is going one on one. Clearlock not getting the better end of that deal. And now Afrimu into oh, the fight. Door lift, taking it down. Rocky turns around with the ice shot, takes him out. Afrimu drops low, he'll be dropping. And Björksen also goes down for the count. 4 4 2, over to LPL. Pushed him away there at the end. That looked like it was actually going to be a pretty good fight because Meteos had a good Lamps respite to keep himself alive for a decent amount of time to whittle their HP about far as away. But man, that the way it trickled off there at the end, too greedy. Yeah, getting so many kills from that fight as well. LPL has just been growing further and further ahead in this game. 3,000 gold ahead. We'll be getting this dragon. We're going to see that fight again. Yeah, too. a couple of key things you need to note. They focus on the Meteos. It starts very well. The later parts of the fight, Aphromoo is just starting here so we can zone Rookie out. Keep your eyes on Uzi in the remainder of this fight though, because yes, Medias uses ulti, but Uzi could have almost dropped there later on. Uh, this is a little slow right now. But the later part is like, he throws in his support, that's all right, but he can almost jukes, he jukes away now to the left right now. Tiny side step, otherwise he would have died right there, and that actually gives him so much time to start cleaning up this fight, and I'm so ter terribly impressed with how well he jukes. Oh, what's up? There's more there than you thought. The stakes were made. Power goes down, pays for it. I regret everything. Yeah, I immediately regret my decision. Yeah, we see, we saw that even in the, in the 1v1 scenarios in our different modes where Uzi's just so aware of skill shots coming his way and he, he reacts so incredibly quick. Yeah, his usage, usage of positioning is actually incredible. Watching how he ducks and dives even out of rush and then in the team fight, very cognizant of what's gonna be heading. I mean, that fight was almost incredibly good for North America. The fact that Medios yeah. managed to get the split second ulti in the bottom, clear off even chased him out of the fight. Didn't contribute, so could have won that fight. Just yeah, Jerkson Q slightly to the left, and he would have died. Outplayed him. 
Well played. Well, NA have uh, four minutes to go before, uh, <laughs> before they will not be the number one seed for their side. But Afro pushing up here with the rest of his team. Caleb taking away this red buff. They have a fight <laughs> erupting here. You know what would be interesting? Just okay. <laughs> crazy thing. What if LPL ended up surrendering 20 minutes? <laughs> you know, sandbagging is what it's all about, right? But then all NA, NA, strategically oh. speaking, NA would end up in the BO3 against is Europe. Genius. Let's see what happens. And we all know how that plays out. <laughs> <laughs> Not as well as if Korea was against Europe. But I mean, actually, I, I just, just strategically speaking. Yeah. yeah, we've already proved that we can win this one. Now pushing down the middle lane. Fire looking for this tower, but also oh. looking for a fight. Rocky jumps into the fight. So much damage coming in from the ultimate. And Darius will have to back away here. Afro gone into the ultimate. Will be tanky as the rest of Ice tries to chase him down. Finally, Darius will go off to, uh, to the side. PYL jumping into the fight. Onto double there, trying to get these stacks down for the stun. Now has to back off. Afro will be followed after the onslaught of shadows. Yet another triple kill coming in for Karo. And a 3 4 0 over to the LPL once again. Yeah, Afro tried to buffer his pulverize to predict Rookie going in. Uh, on the second part of that E ability, but just that yeah, slight fraction too early. And Rookie, he landed at the very last moment he could. If he pressed any later, he probably wouldn't have teleported forward. So, yeah, really close. So that was actually the deciding factor for that fight because Pulverize and cooldown mean so much. Yeah, I want that in super slow motion because the claw will actually disappear from the ground, the indicator, and then you still have about a quarter second to hit it and pop up afterwards. So Aphromoo was playing towards the animation of the claw, which you can't do. <laughs> Not work like that. Double lift now into the bottom lane up against Karo. A lot of minion wave there, but does return some damage. And we're finally seeing the difference uh, between the experience and Sonar player. Oh, well, the Sonar doing well in the game, Rodder. Here we go again. He's gonna throw it out. Boom. It's gone. And then he comes out. It's so smooth there. Beautiful. That was a this, play. this is a great, like, LPL are showing great knowledge of how close they should be with their champion. Yeah, yeah. They're not spacing too far. Yeah, their spacing is absolutely up point this game. And PYL is like, oh, wait, this is where I'm not supposed to be. And even Rookie, where was he for the rest of this fight, right? He was thinking about the Alistar threat range. I can't be near this headbutt pulverized coming out again. Just really great knowledge of the range that they should be at. Now, that's obviously because Aphromo is used to playing on slightly higher ping. He was playing a 40 ping that would have actually been spot on uh, uh, Alistair Pulverize, so... That's true, man. Let's try to make up for the Chicago oh. servers. Yeah. You just delay my PC a little Ooh. bit, but Rocky jumps into fight once again, gets the ultimate off Playlob immediately with the ultimate onto Meteor, trying to take him down before the launcher fight comes out. Akaro into the back line of fire, will get the onslaught of Shadow, and is absolutely decimating them with the Rampage. Takes a back kill, PYL is low, Avramu, a knock up onto two low members, gets the first, but Karo is gonna bite back, force onto the cow, and now Darius has to slink away, but he's not gonna be able to get out. The Pierce lands from Uzi, gets the render as well. It's just a matter of finalizing those papers. Triple kill comes in, and a 5-4-1 once again. LPL, fight after fight, come out ahead. Again, just a beautifully executed team fight there. You saw, I love watching PYL in these fights. Yep. He's staying in just long enough to get the maximum amount of it out, and then he flashes away, and then he gets pulled in when it's time to go back in. And I love what he does on this prop, and how he blocks a whole load of double its damage here. I mean, look at what Rookie did that fight. Triple, triple W into cast off Jan Bjergsen into Zonias. To just to start the fight off, it result in not being used for all things. Fantastic ultimate. He's one between there in the back and just doing so much work. I like that too, that he didn't go straight into Afro move. He went around the side so that he could get a slow on the Dyrus. Overall, just But more importantly, crazy. LPL have now lost their ultimate strategy <laughs> of NAU finals. <laughs> Sandbagging conspiracies can be put to rest. <laughs> yeah. Put away the tinfoil hats. But Dyrus, right here. Wait, you got it. I think you got it. <laughs> oh, PYL. Gets away. Did some nice steals this game. Yeah, Darius, uh, 22 minutes of the game, just has the Triforce and the BF Sword, so probably gonna go for the Infinity Edge from what we saw earlier. Doesn't need to go for the Essence Tree, but already has some facility boots. He'll go for it. I don't know if he'll be able to get it this game. Yeah. I think LPL are on a course to actually end this very quickly. Baron buff up. They're all hitting about two, three item spikes now. In the last eight minutes, Darius has gotten 30 CS. I just checked. That is not a lot of CS. Karo onto Dyrus. Look at the and damage. And he won't be anymore for the yeah. next 30 no. yeah. 
nine to I mean, he was seven. doing super well. He was sitting at a 120 CS at the 15 minute mark. Uh, seven minutes and a half later, sitting at the 157, so. Game took a turn for the worse, and not, that's just not necessarily him missing CS, he's just never been any way, near any waves, and continuous fighting in favor of LPL, and slowed down the progression, that's why he's still sitting on that Triforce with a BF Sword, definitely been slowed down by uh, yeah, the decisions in the game, like North American team. LPL have been absolutely all over this game. The Dragon has just even gone over to them as well. Probably won't even need that, but is there if they want it. They just want to stall the game for another half hour. There's something very interesting here because I was always under the impression that the Sightstone combination items, uh -oh. the eye items, Eye of the Oasis, Eye of the Equinox, are not very good. But you see Eye of the Equinox here for PYL, and what this item does, and I think this is the only one you should actually buy, I think the Talisman one is rather good, even though Talisman is in the same state it was before. The Frost Queen's Flame one is absolutely crazy. You don't buy Eye of the Watcher, ever. You yeah. need that active on the Frost Queen's Flame. But Eye of the Equinox, you sacrifice the face of the Mountain active, you get four wards instead of three, and you actually get closer to your locket 800 gold sooner. So you sacrifice that active for that, and I mean, I always forget to use face the mountain active all the time anyway. <laughs> yeah, it is debatable whether locket's actually still worth building. Right. The item has seen continuous nerfs overall, and there may be better itemization, especially if you look, if you look at selfish itemization, Spirit of Judge can actually be better for supports, stats per the gold spent. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely a fan of IO of Equinox as an item. I think you, you just need those four wards for map control overall. Oh, oh my god. Brick comes out. Karo he still has the ultimate, ultimate though. Uh, it's off cold. I had to use it to retreat and he's just kind of chilling out underneath the tower. Gets the Sterex though. He has off to the side and everyone's just being pushed away from this tower. The top tower goes down looking to turn and take away some of these inhibitor turrets now and crack the base over. Oh, oh flanks though. Really hard. Oh, Uzi just got Afro. knocked down. Afro comes in. There's a knock up the knockback as well. Needs to lock down Uzi for Michos. He's in the round. down the ultimate and will not be taken out. Michos goes down and PYL comes into the fight. Slams in with the base core, but PYL will pay for that knock up. And a two for one over to NA. Koro, they knew that he backed and it was time to go. Bjergsen with the nice wall off there and the Q. Little sluggish there on the Mercurial Scimitar from Uzi. Yeah, good Q flash there in from Alistar. Came oh. back. Still ulti on Korra, didn't come up again. There's the onslaught of the shadows onto the Oh my god, he pinned himself! Kind of locked him into the wall. And Korra taking a lot of damage from the Glacial Storm though. And now Glealov and Rocky coming into the fight. Bjergsen dropping low flashes over the wall. Darius looking for the kill here onto Glealov with the help of double lift. Rocky should be falling. Glacial Power comes across, interrupted by Aphromu. Glealov over the wall. Darius looking to follow. Is not able to get in range with the barrels or the move speed, but a three and zero over to NA squad. Bjergsen's playing a really strong Anivia this game. A couple of really nice walls to be put up there. Predictive cues on Uzi early in that fight. Right now, good spacing overall, so pretty impressed with uh, Bjergsen and Nivea. Let's watch that again. I love this wall. It's so nice. <laughs> Pushes him off to the side. I, I assume he was trying to wall off himself from Koro, but it ended up working out really well because it gave Afro a way to get to him and push him towards double lift, which ultimately was his demise there. From there, who basically just clean up an Afro move. The seeing seeing up Rocky yeah, was, able, was able to get away. Bjergs has been doing such a great job with his stuns and his walls. Yeah. If he keeps this up, they might have a way back in, despite the gold difference. But the problem is, once you get all of these kills, it's so hard to push back up. Yeah, I think NA just needs to, you know, fight here coming in. Ooh, 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 as well. Plus the culling, two on one, died real fast. That's the flare as well. One and zero, nice pick. I think North America needs to change their approach to team fights. have Medias farther back, have Bjergsen be the front line, wall up part of the team, and then force Koro to actually go over the wall with his ultimate, and then have Wham despite in the back line. Medias is going in a little deep. He is drawing a lot of aggro, but it's not in synergy. The more kiting needed from NA, I mean, they can definitely scale to the late game. Even though they're down a lot of gold, 7k right now, they have the tools. They have a couple of champions that play incredibly well still from behind. Yeah, it's... Really strange though, speaking from a jungler perspective myself, you're usually a primary or secondary initiator. It's so hard to change your mindset when you start playing the AD carries. You really still want to go in and be that frontliner. Talking about initiate, Karo just chilling up in the top lane, 9, 3, and 7. He's so tanky, still does a lot of damage from what we've seen. Level 16 now, so has the uh, third level in his ultimate of everyone else. Highest level in the game, in fact. Three over Dyrus. That hurts. Dyrus has hit some good item spikes here, though. A little disappointed I'm not seeing 
the Essence Reaver come out as well for the cooldown reduction. And yeah, PRL right now, building towards uh, a Warden's Randomous Omen later on because he actually saved some gold by combining those items. Doesn't need to shield on other people. The more value he makes to the team is with the more damage he can soak up. And given the fact that Bjergsen will likely not be focusing the support in the fight, is actually very efficient itemization. Works against Virus, works against Double Lift, and more importantly, against Medios as well. So triple value from that armor stacking. So smart itemization overall. Not Baron will be spawning in 30 seconds. After was around the area trying to start this one up for NA, see if they can maybe contest this one. Dyrus going back to base, has to teleport, so does Bjergsen. Just trying to get a little bit more crit. Saw um, Phantom Dancer as the third item. Last time we saw going back. This guy right here, Koro. Honestly, because that is the, the limiting factor for this game here. It's putting so much pressure, it has to bring Dyrus back and doesn't look like that duel will do any good for Dyrus. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna tear through the frozen hearts, Dyrus Gage. Cody. Not at all. They're gonna send the to do it instead. Oh. Just so good of going back there from the NA squad. Baron is now alive, has been walled up quite well by the I squad. Looking to the top side, Crow in the bottom lane for the split push. Yeah, can see. If your mechanics cancel the uh, ultimate to get lost, the extra tech freak would be very proud. It's actually a big deal. A lot of damage, especially in those one ones that we saw. Double lift though, middle lane. It's kind of a stare down right now. This Baron is uh, an option. Dragon's also alive, but not the main priority right now. Really, that objective you go for after a skirmish. It's that Baron that everybody's looking at. You want to get control, you want to get those pink wards out of there. But we've seen it before, time and time again, in this new 5.23 patch with the vision. Four boot twink, it's incredibly hard to bait Barons. Kinda just have to rush them. Double lift also holding on here as well, just in case, to that effect. Just gonna head towards the dragon, should be easy enough for Ice to pick up. They go here though, yeah, it depends how many members they commit. Remember, Bjergsen can wall off the backup if they go for a Baron Rush here. Now, Kara's actually sitting the base, by the way, with Home Guards ready and the Teleport, so he's looking for the engage just in case Fire expose themselves. There's a lot of wards for him to go towards. Hopefully Dyrus will ulti first before he pulls the trigger on the Teleport. He's actually walking over right now, after more in the pink ward, so... Just Remember, NA wants to kite. NA does, want, does not want to engage. They want to bait people in, kite backwards, focus the front line, have Afro trade his life for somebody else with the Unbreakable. Efficient trading there. Yeah, but you absolutely have to play the engage correctly. Well, Afro move perhaps caught out here. Clearly not into the team, however. Flash Frost keeping from behind. The wall has Double left of your off. screen. Koro coming in for the back line. This would be a huge ultimate. Only goes on to Double Lift, though. Immediately cleansed out of. And the rookie comes in. The damage is massive. As Meteos places down his own ultimate to keep his members alive. Now, that has worn off. And Bjergsen goes into the Egg Ball. And PYL is all over the opposition. With the Uzi in the back lines wreaking havoc. Afro move will be the last member to go down. The Quadra kill. Over to Uzi, double lift manages to get out alive. Otherwise, that would have been the Penta. You have to play the engage absolutely perfectly, and they didn't sweep vision behind them. Koro gets a great TP, hits double lift, but then it separates everybody despite getting the Mercurial Scimitar backwards, chunks him out, and he's no longer able to be a part of that fight. Yeah, I just I just love the patience of Koro. So many top laners would just peek around the corner, but he just waits and waits and waits. He just surprised. He just, like, edged yeah, himself yeah. forward. I've, I've never seen anybody with Home Guard do that. Usually you just want to run straight in. Yeah, really good uh, exhaust, I think, that would end up on Coral. Let's watch that again. I do believe he got exhaust. This is bold, knocking clear up to your Olivia. Versus, like, no, 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 do not want. Good wall here, but top up to your screen right now. Let's see. Right around the corner. <laughs> oh, okay, hey. I'm going. Instant exhaust and do too much damage. Double if gets us caught. Really good scimitar, but nice. PRL with a 3 4 man ulti, and then Rookie knows to go in. And even though people won't die in his <laughs> ultimate, the damage is done already. Too many people are low in this fight. Exactly. It doesn't last forever. Pops and then Uzi with the pickup here. I thought he was gonna get a quadra kill, but Double Lift is already backing in the tribe bush at this point. Not a part of this fight. No damage contributed after he jumped out of the Lancer's fight. Yeah. LPL almost benefits more from the Lancer's fight as they were all inside ready for the heal. Uh, just after that, so the Baron going down over that side as well. And uh, it's looking hard for NA to come back into this game now. They had that small window where they were able to stall out the game and get the scaling on Gangplank and Olivia. But uh, now, not looking so hot. Yeah, I was talking about the engage, you have, how you have to play it perfectly. As this kite back composition, you only have so many tools to keep away a diving Hecarim 
uh, Skarner that has Flash, also Lissandra that's going to try to claw in. You have to watch both of your flanks, because they both have TP as well, the top laner and mid laner, and they have ways to get to your back line. They have ways to be a gigantic threat. And PYL, if he gets the appropriate Glacial Fissure, he can hit your back line, and we saw that happen there. So they have so many tools that you have to outplay three or four things, including Fate's Call, on top of everything. Yeah, and if you let one slip through, yeah. you lose the fight, essentially. And Karo, like, how do you stop that from happening? Because they've been choked out of vision around that Baron area as well, so it's not like they can even stop that one from happening, and all of that on top of it. So difficult to play around. But NA right now, I was just hunkering down in the base. They haven't lost any inhibitor turrets yet, so they're not being forced into their base with a super being yeah. yeah. It's really hard to take an inhibitor turret from an Anivia. Yep. Yeah. More importantly so, because as long as all three stay up, there's just no flag up. A lot of these fights have been won by Koro angling or doing some creative moves within the fights, but any team right now is protected by their base, and then it's very easy for Bjergsen uh, to put a really nice wall to really start influencing those fights. In addition to Aphromo's zone, is just so efficient if everybody's coming from the same area because he can then knock somebody back. But right now, the aggressive pawn by Minus and Dyrus. So that is why the LPL right now is opting for the split push as well. They know they can't go for a 5 on Assault or it's a little risky. Go for a dive. Trying to spread that out. Defenses. Yeah. Trying to use these minions in all waves, using that Baron buff efficiently, but in the top lane, Rookie doesn't have it anymore. And Karo now coming back into the mid lane. Took a lot of damage, a lot of harass. Fire do match the hold. They have pretty decent wave play even when split up. If this ends up being a fifth dragon on 5.23, that's pretty crazy. And you're pretty much only going to see that with a Gangplank and an Anivia yeah. in the game. It's just so much wave clear and so much in terms of stall, pass, stall tactics. Yeah, it's just another thing that NA has to fight for as well. Like, this fourth dragon will put them on a tipping point, so they will have to fight over that. They'll also have to try and fight over Baron somehow. It's, it's so hard. Yeah, and the minions are constantly going to push forward because of the minion changes and the turrets being down. They're eventually going to just push out, reach these guys, and then NA gets so much farm funneling into them constantly that they have a possibility to actually catch up. There is though, new Phantom Dancer, new Phantom Dancer, Dancer makes it so that the enemy that you're fighting deals 12% less damage to you, so it's dueling, dueling potential, potential, which is very hard today. Sorry, That's definitely good. improved. <laughs> Made it to the casting desk. I know, congratulations. Yeah, it's actually a lot better, so maybe down the line, if he actually gets a last whisper, somehow, even though you don't really want that on Gangplank, you know, most yeah. barrels already penetrate armor, but there's so much armor inside of Koro. Once he can start dealing with the Hecarim later, later, in, the, later in the game, because Koro is kind of running out of item slots. Gold leads are only useful until you actually have stuff to buy it with. Yeah, then well. it's a boot enchant. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Darius has that going for him, so that's nice. Yeah, but that's that's, that's what that's the advice. The way. <laughs> that's the advice I always give in Solo Cube. Hang on, guys, they're almost out of item slots. <laughs> we'll get them. Well, better than nothing, I guess. Ten seconds until the dragon spawns will be the fourth for LPL. Fifth one is the big one. But it uh, looks like Fire will try and poke, test, maybe get a steal over the wall. What do they can really hope for? Do you think you're strong enough to actually fight them in this environment they have set up? I'm gonna go with no. Koro, back, yeah. waiting for the TP play. Yeah, Ward's in the mid lane. A little far. Minion's in the mid lane too. Arrow though. Lands onto Rookie. Fair chunk of damage. And the Dragon is going down. Aphromir looking for the steal that will go over to Team Ice. Karo now comes into fight. Immediately slowed down by the Glacial Storm. Aphromir into the back lines. is taking a lot of damage, but it's still in ultimate form. Clearly, Love managed to get the ultimate down onto Mitos. Should be able to pop him before the ultimate comes down. In fact, not. But Mitos just had to hang here until Uzi takes him out with the Ren damage. Bjergsen caught on the front lines. He'll have to flash away. And finally, Karo uses the ultimate to lock down Bjergsen. Pulls him into the team. And Uzi will just rack up these stacks and go for the Ren. Picking up that kill. Dualif goes down. Darius is the sole remaining member of NA. And now LPL can crack the base. Yeah, they're probably going to push it up very quickly here. Possibly get an inhibitor, possibly end the games. There's 50 second death timers already, 36 minutes into it. Yeah, Afro went a little deep there. Did the right thing, but his team was not on board. So that's exactly what he wants to do if it comes to a fight. But there was actually no fight, so his only kind of went to waste. Really good teleport again for really playing well around these three home guards he's received at the 20 minute mark. I know it's a dank meme, but Koro's spacing there was really good. He ran up, baited them. All four members that weren't Afro move had to chase Coral back in because it looked like he was going to dive them, so they all backed up. And then when he was like, nope, I'm actually not coming in, showing great patience with his trigger finger. We saw it with the home guard TP. 
previously. This time, once again, the same thing, playing mind games. Yeah, it's so good to see him with so many kills stacked on him as well, just not letting them go to waste, or he's making the maximum use in every single fight that we see. And now that the base is being cracked, the middle inhibitor went down. Wasn't able to finish the game because minions weren't there, but we're going to see that fight once again. There's the TP. Everybody needs to get away from this. Coral comes in. It's like, nope. Look at how far away they ran from him. And then he keeps faking that he's going to come back in. See those steps? Forward, forward, forward. And by this point, Aphra moves. Ulti is down. They pulled Meteos in, and they separate them again. They're basically pulling in one at a time to kill them. And now Beerix. <laughs> Yeah, I was, he was just stacking uh, spears on Aphrom while I was in that ultimate. Not dealing too much damage, but the second he comes out of it, pop. Next. Yeah, Uzi was having a great time. He was doing just standing still, auto attacking, getting the rends out. The Baron has spawned once again for LPL already onto this objective. Fire have pushed out of their base, but they just can't even get near. When PYL is able to zone the entire team away, they have a problem. There's the Baron once again going over to LPL, clearing out some wards on the way. P uh, PYL actually joins with the rest of the team. The teleport now coming in from Rocky, trying to flank with the home guards. That's the extra movement speed, but no one is around just yet. Spending up the team from fire. Double left coming in with a culling. Rocky coming in after him. But the Aphromoo has been locked up. There's the onslaught of the Shadows to start off the fight. And Bjergsen pulled into the team. No egg this time. Warby going down. Mitras has to back off to the side. He split up. And Uzi is going ham inside the base. Is now waiting on Darius and Aphromoo. This looks like it could be curtains for the NA team. Aphromoo goes down. There's the double. Looking for the dribble onto Darius. The orange has come up. But it is not okay. And Uzi now pushing in with the rest of the team to try and finish off this game. And unfortunately, both of these teams will not be representing their sides in the finals. But this is a great game from China. They came here to prove that these individual players have a lot of skill, and it shows. Impressive showing from the LPL, decimating the NA team and picking up yet another victory. Uzi's like the only guy smiling. He's like, guys, we did it. I made an international event this year. It took 39 minutes. No. Yeah. Coral, some, some fantastic teleports over, although I, I like the way LPL got ahead in this game by the use of teleport. Remember, Rookie went top very early in the game to get Coral ahead. He was trailing behind against Tyrus. We had the whole fight in the bottom. I think that bottom lane tower, we may get it on the analysis later. Um, not The usage of, of Tyrus' ultimate could have been a lot better. He decided to teleport in and then uh, start using the ultimate. That slowed down the fight too much. Two telegraph. Very tricky uh, to 5v5 in the bot lane when the tower's involved. Yeah, I did like the idea from NA of making a proactive play and going for the tower dive. Coming into Season 6, that's more of what I want to see in NA. We've been so passive in terms